Hey folks, BCSG here. Today, I want to revisit a topic that I spoke about in a very, very early video of mine called ultralight fishing or ultralight setups fishing in Singapore. However, instead of doing the same thing and talking about it from the spinning side of things, what I'm going to do today is explore this same topic from the bait casting side of things. Disclaimer. This is not in any way intended to be a video on bait finesse systems or BFS. I am not a BFS specialist, neither do I claim that what I do is actually BFS. This video is simply about my experiences with ultralight bait cast fishing, or what I will call UBF as an abbreviation. Before we go on, let's establish what BFS is. What is BFS to me? Now, keyword here is to me, how at least how I understand BFS. Now, how I understand it is BFS was developed to allow anglers to throw smaller lures in high pressure fishing areas, much like the legal grounds in Singapore, but generally for bass, as in largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, bass. Now, as I've mentioned a few times before, fish tend to be a bit more, quite a bit more wary in high pressured fishing grounds like our legal grounds in Singapore, and they spook more easily. So presenting them with, with smaller lures like, like micro lures like these, you know, tends to spook them less, number one. Number two is it tends to translate into getting a higher hit rate than using the standard affair of of, of really big lures. I mean, look at the difference in size here. I mean, of course, this is not supposed to represent every single large lure you throw, but you kind of get my point. The problem with using smaller lures like these, I mean, this is a this is a three gram lure, this is a, a lure that's under two grams. The problem with it is it can be a pretty challenging to cast these small micro lures on a bait casting setup. Trying to throw a two to three gram Lure on a typical light class, like what I have here. Oops. Light class bait casting setup. This is a Trickster four to twelve pound setup with a with my Curado eye. Now trying to cast a two to three gram lure on a setup like this, even if the reel was a was a typical size fifty bait casting reel with a stock spool and and basically stock, is extremely challenging. So basically over time, and mostly in Japan, manufacturers started producing, they realized this, this challenge that bait cast anglers were facing and they started producing rods and reels with very specific characteristics targeted at throwing these tiny lures. And that gradually became known as BFS. Now, at least this is how I understand it. Well, what some of you might ask, but Brian, isn't UBF or ultralight bait cast fishing essentially BFS? The BFS purest answer would be, hell no. Hell no. But my answer would be, honestly, it, it doesn't really matter to me at this point. Because BFS equipment is pretty much just a means to an end for me. You see, the problem with the term or the genre of BFS is that there's so many technicalities surrounding this genre. What makes a piece of equipment BFS or bait finesse? Is it, is it the letters BF or BFS printed in the model name? Is it the line rating of the rod? Is it its action characteristics? Or maybe it's the entire setup, rod and reel. The setup's ability to cast lures be below a certain weight. What exactly defines BFS? So, an important point that most people misunderstand about BFS, or at least the way I understand BFS, is essentially that BFS is a technique used to present small lures to the same fish. The key words here are the same fish. Small lures to the same fish, not small lures to small fish. So the characteristics of a BFS setup essentially requires the rod and the reel to be able to throw these small lures 
but at the same time also be able to handle the ensuing fight from these regular to large sized fish N mainly in Japan that would be bass largemouth bass or black bass whatever you call it ultralight fishing on the other hand simply refers to using ultralight class tackle to catch fish period so what's my purpose of venturing into ultralight bait cast fishing well it's pretty simple really to do what I do on my ultralight spinning gear with a bait caster instead that is to cast micro lures ranging from 1 to 7 grams reliably for the purpose of targeting fish in high pressure overfished legal grounds in Singapore what would I say the requirements of UBF are the answer to this is also pretty simple you essentially need a rod that can load lures ranging from 1 to 7 grams or 1 to 8 grams and a reel that when paired with this rod is allows you to cast these micro lures effectively now moving on from that what determines a rod's ability to load light lures now this applies to both spinning and bait casting setups but definitely more so to bait casting setups it's basically a few things the tip action of the rod for one the overall action or the taper of the rod and the casting style of the user now something that I've discovered over uh, over the over time since venturing into UBF is that just cause a rod is labeled as a BFS rod or just cause the rod has a printed lure rating that goes all the way down to one gram or one over 32 ounces doesn't mean that it'll be able to cast lures in that way for you the action characteristics of the rod need to suit your casting style and the type of fishing that you're doing do you tend to have a light wrist and kind of flick your lures out there or do you tend to have a little bit of a heavier hand and prefer whipping your lures are you casting into little tight spots surrounded by heavy cover do you have limited space around you you know all, all of these things your casting style and your fishing your fishing situation ultimately determine what kind of rod will allow you to throw these micro lures most efficiently so now of course moving on to the reel what determines a reel's ability to cast micro lures two main things the weight of the spool and the braking system on the reel basically a lighter spool requires less force to start up now I'm just I'm gonna to try to to give as layman terms as I can without getting too technical because well technical stuff is boring for most people so a lighter spool requires less force to start up this allows a lighter lure to essentially fly faster and further and less hindered by this the weight of the spool now a lighter spool also has less rotational momentum what that basically means is once the spool has started up spinning the lighter the spool is the less force it's going to take to slow the spool down this basically means it requires less control when you're casting you don't have to turn up the brakes as high you don't have to use as much thumb you don't have to play with the spool tension as much as you would have to with a heavier spool so that's the first thing now the second thing brake systems brake systems is a lot like what I just talked about with regarding with regards to the rods it's there isn't one it, it's really firstly it's really personal it's it's subjective to the angler and secondly there isn't one brake system that is better than the rest different people cast more efficiently with different brake systems and each brake system has their own pros and cons now there are generally three types of brake systems available in the market today the first one would be spool tension but that I'm going to skip that entirely because spool tension is available in every single bait casting reel out there today so it's an equal playing field I'm only going to talk about the other two because quite often you find one or the other and in very very rare instances you find both on one reel now the first brake system would be a centrifugal braking system now this is usually found or typically found on Shimano bait casting reels or at least Shimano is most well known for their centrifugal brakes there are a couple of newer Shimano reels that actually use magnetic brakes but I don't know much about them 
So centrifugal brakes are essentially friction brakes. They are feet, and as the, the spool spins, the feet push further out and contact this rim that lines the outside of the spool mechanism. Basically, the faster, the, the faster that the spool spins, the more force the feet push outwards against this rim, slowing down the spool with friction. Now, centrifugal brakes, because of this mechanism, are very effective at controlling the initial burst of speed when you first cast your lure. You know, when you first go to make a cast, the lure fi flies fastest and the spool spins fastest right at the start of the cast. Because the amount of friction force applied increases with speed, this makes it very easy to control that initial burst of speed, which can most often lead to a backlash if you don't thumb the spool properly. However, because of this same mechanism, as the spool slows down, the amount of brakes applied decrease as well. Now, this basically means that centrifugal brakes are not as efficient for controlling a lure that is slowing down. Or should you happen to get a gust of wind whilst the lure is flying and the lure speed decreases dramatically, centrifugal brakes are not going to be able to slow the spool down fast enough to prevent a backlash. So to sum it up, centrifugal brakes help you at the start of the cast they don't really help you at the end of the cast and they're not really good casting into the wind. Now the next braking system I'm going to talk about is magnetic brakes. Magnetic brakes are usually found on reels like Daiwa, Abu, in fact quite a, f a much larger number of reels out there actually use magnetic brakes. As the name says, magnetic brakes uses mag uh, magnets to essentially slow down the spool. The magnetic force generated by the magnet on the metal spool slows the spool down. The downside of this is that the force is consistent throughout the cast. Because it's not friction based, it, the, the, the magnets don't move unless you manually turn the knob, it essentially applies the same brake force no matter what the speed of the spool is. Now that in itself already tells you that it won't really help you much at the start of the cast. So you, you whip the lure out, when the, when the spool is turning at its fastest and the lure is flying at its fastest, the brake force stays the same, which means if you don't really control with your thumb or you don't do anything else to control that flight, you can get a backlash or an overrun very easily from the start of the cast using magnetic brakes. Where magnetic brakes shine, on the other hand, is when the lure is slowing down. Because the force doesn't change, it doesn't decrease as the lure slows down, so it continues applying that brake force as the lure slows down and prevents that overrun from momentum generated by the spool spinning. So to sum it up, magnetic brakes are the complete opposite of centrifugal brakes. They, are, they don't help you as much at the start of the cast, they help you more towards the end of the cast, and of course, they cast a lot better in windy conditions. So bottom line, understand which brake system works best for your casting style and choose a reel with a brake system that you are most comfortable with using. Generally, the first reel you pick up, whatever brake system it has on that reel, if you learnt to cast a bait caster with that brake system, most people just stick with it because you just get comfortable. Both brake systems do handle extremely differently. That's something that is really important to understand. So I hope that this info on brake systems, or at least if you're just starting out, it'll help you get a better idea of what brake system you should be going, or you should be going for, for your first reel. All right, moving on to line. What line is the best for ultralight bait cast fishing? Now this is I wouldn't say it's a controversial topic, but it's certainly a highly debated topic. You know, you've got monofilament or fluorocarbon lines versus braided lines. I mean, that's an ongoing debate in every genre of fishing. So unless you have access, you know, we're talking about Singapore here. Okay, I'm, I'm based in Singapore, so of course, most of my topics would be subjective to Singapore. Unless you have access to cheaper fluorocarbon lines, your best bet would probably be to go for a braid if you're based in Singapore. Why? 
because fluorocarbon lines in Singapore tend to be just as expensive as braids price per meter. Now, to the, the, the guys in the West or the guys in other countries watching this video, that might come as a huge shock to you, but it's true. So anyway, enough about that. I use the same guidelines for line as I do with my ultralight spinning gear when it comes to UBF. Now, that is point one. There is a point where diminishing returns kick in for line diameter. What this means is beyond a certain thinness, the benefits that you get for, with, in terms of cast distance just get less and less significant. Number two, using too thin of a line, especially on bait casting setups, only makes backlashes harder to control. They just knot up a bit deeper. You just take a, a lot longer to get that bihun or that backlash um, undone. Three, always use a leader that has a lighter brick strength than your main line, unless you're targeting a species of fish with sharp teeth like snakeheads. Now this allows you to break the leader instead of the main line if you happen to get stuck on something. Because most, if you're using braid, you're going to be using some sort of joint knot, FG, double uni, whatever, to connect the main line to a leader material. If you use a leader material that's lighter than your, that's heavier than your main line, you happen to get stuck on something and there's no way to retrieve it, your only choice is to break the main line. The leader is heavier than your main line, it's not going to break. But if you did it the other way around, you can almost guarantee that if you get stuck and you pull, the leader will break and most of the time it will break at the knot that you tie to the lure or to the snap because that's the weakest point of your line. So that just kind of saves you the time of, of tying, retying a joint knot like an FG knot that could take up to 5 or 10 minutes. Okay, so what line diameter is best for UBF? Well, in my experiences so far at least, braids ranging from PE 0 0.8 to 1 or a diameter of, I think it is about 0.14 mm. Yeah, 0.14 mm, that's PE 0 0.8, I believe. Lines of this thinness or thickness are more than enough to cast micro lures ranging from 1 to 8 grams without hindering cast performance at all. Going below PE 0 0.8, in my opinion, is unnecessary if we're just talking about the practicality of things here. Practicality meaning, does it allow you to cast those lures efficiently or not? If it does, you don't really need to go any thinner than that. At least just my, that's just my take on it. So in conclusion, why UBF? Why ultralight bait cast fishing? My personal answer would be because bait I personally find bait casters more fun to use. I've always found bait casters more fun to use. It's a fun factor, literally. Other than that, bait casters have no pesky bail arm to deal with. There's no line twist issues to deal with. And it's overall, I think most of us can agree, that it's overall a bit less tiring to use over a really long period of fishing, uh, to use a bait casting reel over a really long period of fishing because you just requ just requires less movement to execute each cast. With a spinning setup, you reel it in, you lift the rod, you trigger the, the line, open the bail arm, get ready, flick it out, close the bail arm, and start working it. You bring it back in, trigger the line, open the bail arm, aim, flick it out, close the bail arm, continue reeling. That is the process it takes to cast a lure on a spinning setup. On a bait casting setup, you pick it up, you click it, you cast, you retrieve. It comes back in, you lift the rod up, you click it, you cast, you retrieve. There is almost no crossover in terms of hand usage. It's just one hand operation, one hand for a specific purpose. That's it. Now, having said that, I genuinely feel that almost everything that UBF can do, ultralight spinning can do as well. But the opposite might not be necessarily true, for me personally at least. But I believe that both genres, spinning and bait casting, have very specific situations in which one is clearly more efficient than the other. Now, I'm not going to list out every single situation because they're just far too many and it's far too debatable, but you get what I mean. So in the end, 
ultralight bait cast fishing, ultralight spinning, the choice is ultimately down to personal preference here. What you find the most fun, what works for you the best in your situation, you know, what, what basically allows you to catch the most fish because, hey, that's kind of the point of what we do here, right? Catch fish. All right, that's all for this video, folks. Don't forget that I have the results announcement video coming out for my subscriber giveaway. It, should, it will be coming out on Friday. If I plan this video correctly, this video should come out on Thursday. And that would mean you still have time to participate because the participation window ends at 12 midnight on Thursday. Just so that I can get all the results and get the video out to you guys on Friday. And once again, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Share my videos with your friends if you learned something. And of course, lastly, subscribe. Tight lines, guys. I'll see you in the next video.